This is a video for section 6.3, day 2. We're going to continue working with elimination, solving systems by eliminating a variable. And today we're going to focus on, first of all, multiplying one or both equations so that the coefficients in front are the exact same number. Yesterday it was really ideal. Um, day one material because the numbers in front of one of the variables was already the same. Today, unfortunately, it's not going to be that way. So we're going to have to multiply one or both of the equations in order to make one of the coefficients in front of the variables the same. So let's take a look at example three. First step is to eliminate one of the variables. And what you want to do is take a look at the coefficients. We have negative two, seven, fifteen, negative five. Um, and ideally, it would be nice to just multiply one of them, not both. We're going to have to do both in the next equation. But you can see that number 5 and 15, those are related to each other by 3. So what we're going to do is multiply the second equation by 3 and then combine them. So let's take a look what that means. So like I said, we are going to multiply the second equation by 3, and then we're going to add the equations together. And I gave you a little summary in the top right. If the coefficients of a variable have different signs, we're going to add the equations. The whole goal is to get rid of the variables. If the coefficients have the same signs, such as both positive or both negative, in order to cancel them out, you must subtract. Otherwise, you won't be canceling them out. So let's do this. Let's multiply the first, sorry, the second equation by 3 and then we're going to add. So the first equation does not change, so we're going to rewrite that as is, and the second equation we're going to multiply everything by 3. So that means we have 21x minus 15y equals 51, and we're going to add the equations. So that means we have 21x plus a negative 2x, that's 19x, 15y plus a negative 15y cancels out. And lastly, 51 plus a negative 32 is 19. We have a one step, divide both sides by 19, and we get x equals 1. So we're halfway, if not a little bit more than halfway there. Now step two is to find the eliminated variable y, and you can use either of the original equations. I think I will use the second equation just because it looks nicer. So we have the second equation, and we're going to plug in 1 for x. We have 7 times 1 minus 5y equals 17. And that means we're going to subtract 7 to the other side. So we have negative 5y equals 10. And lastly, we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. And we're going to get negative 2 y equals negative 2. Very last step is to put it in coordinate form and we will be done with this problem. Our solution is the coordinate point 1 comma negative 2. So remember solution means where the two lines cross paths or intersect. And also please remember that in order to check your answer you can just plug your coordinate point back in for the original equations and if it works for both you are good to go. Now, this example, we only multiplied one equation. Sometimes we must multiply both equations in order to eliminate one of the variables. So please take a moment to look at these two equations. We have 3x plus 2y equals 1, and 4x plus 3y equals negative 2. We need to find the solution and use elimination. First step is to multiply each equation so that we can eliminate one of the variables. So what you want to do is take a look at the numbers in front, 3, 4, 2, 3. And they're both related to each other. Um, 2 and 3 are smaller numbers, so I'm going to work with those just because they're going to have easier numbers to work with. 
So what we're going to do is multiply both equations by a certain number separately, and the goal is to get the number in front of the y exactly the same. Now the smallest or least common, um, the least common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6. So we want to make the numbers in front of the y 6. So in order to get this 2 to become a 6, we're going to have to multiply the whole first equation by 3. And in order to get this 3 a 6, we're going to have to multiply the whole second equation by 2. So let's do that now. We're going to multiply by 3 and multiply by 2. So that's going to give us 9x plus 6y equals 3. Remember, we're multiplying every little number by 3 on top. And the second equation, we're going to have 8x plus 6y equals negative 4. We multiplied everything by 2. The good news is the numbers in front of the y are both 6. They are the same sign, so we are going to subtract to get rid of the numbers. Otherwise, we would get 12 if we added. So let's subtract now. And remember, we're subtracting everything. So 9x minus 8x is 1x. And 6y minus 6y is 0, gone. And 3 minus a negative 4 is positive 7. So x equals 7. Now, in order to find the y, we're going to substitute this 7 in for the x in either equation. The first equation looks slightly easier, so let's use that one. So what we're going to do is take the 7 and plug it in for the x in the first equation. So we have 3 times 7 plus 2y equals 1. 3 times 7 is 21. So we're going to take the 21 and subtract it to the other side, opposite operations. That's going to give us 2y equals negative 20. One step divided by 2, and you get y equals negative 10. So lastly, you put them in coordinate form, and we'll be done with this. Solution is x comes first, 7 comma negative 7. That is the point where these two lines cross paths. All right, let's take a look at special circumstances or systems. Remember, we've looked at this in the past couple of videos. When solving a system, if the variables cancel out, It's really not letting me write. Variables cancel out, and you get a true statement, then there are infinitely many solutions. That, that means there's both lines are the exact same line. Whereas if you get a false statement, there's no solution, aka parallel lines. So make sure you fill in those blanks. A true statement is also called an identity, by the way. Now let's take a look at example 5 below. And we need to figure out how many solutions there are with this system. We have 2x plus 6y equals 18, and x plus 3y equals 9. Let's multiply the second equation by negative 2 in order to get rid of the variable x. So we're going to multiply the second equation by negative 2. Or you can multiply by positive 2 and then subtract. This, I think this is a little bit quicker. So now we have 2x plus 6y equals 18. Same equation for the first one. The second equation is now negative 2x minus 6y equals negative 18. Now remember, in the other examples, I told you if the numbers have opposite signs, then you're going to add in order to cancel out. So 2x plus sorry, 2x plus a negative 2x is 0, 6y plus a negative 6y is 0, and 18 plus a negative 18 is also 0. So 0 equals 0. So at first glance, you may think to yourself, oh, this is no solution. But actually, this is a true statement. This is an identity. So because this is 
an identity, aka zero does equal zero, there are infinitely many solutions. And remember, that just means every single point on the line is a solution of both equations. That completes today's material. Um, take a look at this flowchart. I think this is really nice and um, it helps us organize all of the different tricks and all that. So take a look at that. Um, and lastly, you can try the lesson check for day two or you can wait until we do problems together, but just make sure you have done day one lesson check of 6.3. Thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you tomorrow.